A classic mistake that new Geometry Dash players usually make is focusing too much on their icons to make sure they don't get too close to any obstacles. And while that might seem like a viable strategy at first, it actually hinders your ability to sight read, because while you're there, admiring the astonishing complexity of the default cube with staggering amounts of intricate details put into its very complicated design, you wonder, why can't I beat Stereo Madness? Well, that's because you're looking at the cube too much. But as you play the game more and eventually become an experienced player, you won't feel the urge to stare your cube 24-7 just to feel safe, since by then, you will likely have an intuitive notion of where the icons usually are on the screen, allowing you to shift your focus to the layout of the level, which makes you a better sight reader. So, if you already used to look ahead of your icons when beating levels, you're most likely an ahead of the curve player, if I say so myself. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, Geometry Dash made you die a lot by not your fault, but by fault of the orb that seemed so innocent, so we decided to click it. The fuck? And then you just watched yourself dying like an idiot. But now you, when you became advanced in Geometry Dash, you learned to pass these trolls by side reading. Okay, so take a look at this level, for example. We have some trolls here, and first troll is definitely the jump pad, because if you jump on the jump pad, you bump to the spike and die, obviously. And since we don't want that, you, we need to... That. What I'm trying to say is that more advanced you are in the game, bigger ability you have to predict those trolls. Yeah, I'm terrible at explaining. And if the level is slightly harder, you can also use the hardcore mode. Slow 45% is not plus 3. Yeah, Bruh. So there you are, about to beat yet another hard demon. Your friends have been telling you how hard it is for them to beat, and they've been struggling for hours on this demon. You reach to the comments of the level, and some say they have taken 500 to even 1000 attempts just to beat this hard demon. Seems like a huge wave of challenges to overcome, but it's not that hard at all. And then, you start after only starting the level, you have just realized how perplexing, laborious, stressful, and quite deceiving this level has become. I mean, just look at those tight spaces. Surely this is going to take you a week to beat it. Oh wait, you just beat it in 10 minutes. What the fuck? Yeah, if you're able to consistently sight read a challenging level and beat it lower than the average amount of attempts it takes for other people, then that is a huge sign that you're a better player than most people in the GD community. It shows that you understand the physics of the game very well, and on top of that, your consistency on these skill-based levels are probably high. This also shows that hard demons that below aren't really within your skill level, and that you should challenge yourself with an even harder challenge. To me, I am able to sight read most easy demons and it usually takes me around 50 or less attempts to beat them And I have beat more than one extreme demons So if you're doing the same ordeal with hard demons chances are you either completed dozens if not hundreds of extremes Or you at least are within the same level as that Wait, wait a minute. It shows you have no clue. Oh, you lying Like the moment you try to put your ego up there, you're probably down there already. The more you play, the know you will know your limitations well. Like you will know what you're bad at. So when somebody says, "Oh, you're so good," you will just say, "Like, nah, man, I'm bad." <laughs> Furthermore, good players don't focus on stats either. Like, yeah, you can have all the list demons complete. Does that make you the best player out there? And if you really are a good player, and this is an actual good point, good players only focus on their future levels, their upcoming projects, the next big thing. They are trying to put the bar higher, right? They don't look back on their previous achievements and brag about that. Geometry Dash is a game that makes your heart go to numbers that are higher than you running a marathon. Even so, you got to learn how to stay calm and not, uh, let's say, get too nervous. Controlling your nerves is key for success when it comes to completing levels. Being able to control them well is amazing. It reduces your chance of dying at 98% and dying in real life. Anyhow, another thing you'd have to master is not being lazy. Yeah, I guess that's kind of hard to work with.
Basically, as an example, you won't just leave a Prax run in the middle of nowhere just because you got bored of the level and would show perseverance, which is cool. Supreme is a great example of this. Like, the man went from beating Stereo Madness to Ouroboros in like, two years? Maybe? Oh, okay, let me lower it a bit, like, one year. Surely that must be right. Well, you're wrong. Uh, ten months. The what? Yeah. It just shows that if you're determined, you'll get far. A clear tell that you might be a good player is that you're always challenging yourself, since beginner players are oftentimes afraid of trying out harder levels, which causes them to develop their skills more slowly, and makes it harder for them to improve. Experienced players will beat a level, and then they will start looking for a harder one right away, because those types of players always strive to conquer increasingly harder levels the more they play, since everyone enjoys to feel like they're getting better, and nothing makes you feel that way more than beating a level that is harder than your previous hardest. However, if your current hardest is something like Retray, you should probably not try Tartarus next, unless you're a masochist or something, but if you constantly push your limits in a healthy way, you're sure to get more skilled over time. Or you can just call it patience, and it's the ability to not mentally give up whenever dying far in the level. Obviously, this also comes with time, because more levels you play equals more attempts to die far equals less surprising for you. Quick maths. No fucking way! I am dead. Being that not only improves your mental health, but it also Just don't try to hide your feelings on purpose, because that can lead to a heart attack. Unless you're like this guy or something- WAIT WHAT?! Have you seen GD players that either react nonchalantly with extremes or talk while they are getting far on an extreme? This usually occurs when you are used to the pressure of beating one of these levels, that they are just able to have normal talks on the go when it comes to these types of levels. A good and fine example of these signs are N-Switch and Lulwood. Although you typically don't have full-on conversations with these people, it does show that you are able to multitask on conversating in a VC while beating the level, which defocuses on the level that you are playing. And it's more impressive that people are able to do these kinds of things when it comes to facing some of the hardest levels in Geometry Dash, and a ton of people do the complete opposite. I have come across more people in public VCs telling me to shut, shut up, up getting they're far. getting far in a demon that they're trying oh, to pass. God. Meanwhile, these fewer minorities do these levels normally and talk as well, meaning they don't mind having a multitask on socializing while beating these levels. Wait a minute, I just beat blood meth while commentating, what the f Like, it's plain simple, dude. If you focus on clicking harder, you just lose focus off the game and you'll die. Which pros don't. Pros don't die. Have you ever seen a pro die? Exactly. That's the point I'm making. That's why you stay focused on the game. You don't focus on your hard clicks. But if you unintentionally, instinctively click hard, you are generally a better Geometry Dash player. But that does not mean you have to click intentionally harder. Keep that in mind, kids. You'll become the next Jump Dress Pro. But if you do any of these, then that's a sign you're a top 10 Jump Dress Pro. Wait, what? <laughs> the only reason why you should click hard is so that your jumps are more accurate. Okay, reactions. They are great, wholesome, and funny. However, if you don't have them naturally, not trying to be edgy, of course, it also may mean that you're just a good player. In a way. Okay, okay, that may sound weird, but it makes sense. Trust me. Usually you have a great and extreme reaction when you beat something after a lot of struggle and pain. It's true. Just look at any completion with over 10 or 20,000 attempts, and their reaction is somewhat big. Get wrecked, serve! Get freaking served! He beat it! Except Enswish, because that man is inhuman and literally everyone in the top 10.
Anyhow, moving on. The opposite happens when you beat something with little attempts, meaning less time and less pain. Unless the level completely sucks, but that is a completely different story. So in most cases, less of a reaction means less time and attempts, overall meaning you're a good player in GD and you can beat something harder than an easy demon. Good job. Oh yeah, another point is that you may have been at so many extreme demons that you're just used to it now. How on earth? Yeah, okay, that's it, moving on. Yo, thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, I will appreciate every like, subscribe, and replying to every comment. And I am more active on platforms like Twitch and Discord and YouTube. So if you want to see me there, you can join by the link in the description. And most importantly, check out the channels of all the participators in this cola because their content is amazing. It may take you some time, but I promise it will be worth it. And just subscribe to him and give them some love. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video.